Welcome back. You're watching HFO TV. Welcome back to HFO TV. I'm Greg Frick, partner at HFO Investment Real Estate. Here today, we're lucky to have John DiLorenzo, partner at Davis Wright Tremaine, and happens to be the lead counsel for the lawsuit against Med T uh, Mayor Ted Wheeler in the city of Portland on the URM issue that we've all heard about in the last uh, probably year and a half, so thank you. Well, thank you, Greg, for having me here, too. I'm lucky to be here, too. Maybe you could give a little update to our audience. We've kind of kept you know, the investment side of kind of abreast of what's going on, but kind of talk about where we are today on this whole URM update in terms of the lawsuit, what's gone on with the city, and things of that nature. Well, the original ordinance right. um, provided for a number of things. It required the owners of URM properties to uh, put placards on their buildings, and it staggered the times when they had to do that. If you're a, if you have the identical building that uh, falls below the city's standards with respect to reinforcement, and you happen to be a school, you have an indeterminate amount of time to put the plaque. Regardless of the type, regardless of the building. No, no, no. You, the we're going to say building. the same exact building. If if you're a nonprofit you had uh, a year and a half into 2020 to put up the placards. But if you happen to be making a profit, if you happen to be in the profit sector, you had until uh, March 1st of this year to put up the placard. In addition, by March 1st, you had to notify all of your tenants um, uh, that you were a URM building and uh, uh, would be unsafe in, in right. the case of an earthquake. You had to make those same disclosures in all of your written lease agreements, okay. and you had to sign a contract with the city that swore up and down that you would not remove the placards until you had retrofitted up to the new standards that the city maintains, and you then had to take that contract and record it in the Multnomah County records and make it an encumbrance on your title. So you now have an encumbrance on your title with the contract with the city. Right. So those were all the things you had to do under the original ordinance. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, we complained and uh, went through uh, lots of negotiations with uh, the mayor's office and others. I had no recor recourse but to sue them. And uh, we filed a lawsuit in the federal district court the lawsuit alleges that all of these things that an owner has to do is compelled speech in violation of the right. First Amendment, the United States Constitution. The U.S. Constitution, as most people know, um, uh, prohibit government from controlling the speech that people wish to engage in. But what many people don't realize is that the Constitution also prohibits the government from compelling people to say things that they otherwise would not say, with a few exceptions. Uh, one exception is if you're engaged in commercial speech and you have a message that you're broadcasting or advertising, the government can require you to say certain things that make your message not misleading okay. to the public. But in this case, we're not advertising anything. Right. We're not saying safest buildings in town or earthquake resistant or whatever. And so there are a number of federal cases that have recently come down. Uh, one in particular uh, had to do with uh, the uh, soda tax that was, in, or the soda disclosures that were uh, imposed by the city of San Francisco. And uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has struck down that requirement that soda manufacturers have to disclose the amount of sugar in their drinks. There was another case recently in New York State where uh, a small town required the power company to have to post on all of its above ground power poles that had creosote, notices that creosote could cause cancer and the federal district court struck that regulation down. So we went ahead and, uh, and filed, uh, and we also filed a motion for a preliminary injunction. Uh, once that happened, the city began to reconsider. and uh, Reconsider the whole program of putting placards on, right. And uh, Commissioner uh, Hardesty uh, first 
declared that the Fire Bureau was no longer going to enforce the ordinance. Uh, the mayor then responded that it was the law and she shouldn't have done that, but regardless, the Bureau of Development Services was going to continue to okay. enforce the ordinance. And now it seems that probably as of tomorrow, uh, the city is going to cut back. They're going to eliminate, through another ordinance, the uh, requirement that uh, tenants need to be notified. They're going to eliminate the need for uh, disclosures and leases. Okay. They're going to eliminate the need to record contracts in the records. In so there'll the be no recording on title. So there'll be no okay. recording on title at all. They're going to postpone the placarding until 2020, even for profit-making companies. And they're going to substitute a new requirement that lease applications by June 1st must include these warnings, these disclosures. So we, we went to- So this is up for- a Vote tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. So we went to court about two weeks ago and- uh, Tomorrow being February 27th. Right, okay. we, we went to court two weeks ago and we persuaded the, the court to grant a temporary restraining order which basically prohibits the city from enforcing any part of the ordinance at all until May 1. Uh, the city's not allowed to lift a finger to enforce okay. the ordinance, and the court made very clear that, that owners are not required to abide by it. Uh, it's as if it doesn't exist until May 1. We have a hearing uh, in late April, I think it's April 26th, where we will consider whatever it happens to be. And Once we will the, pursue, the city right. changes, right. So they can change what they're doing, they just can't enforce. They, they can't can, enforce it. Got it, okay. And they can't enforce any of Anything. it. Anything. Even whatever they change. And then on April 26th, we're gonna have a whole day, whole day hearing to determine whether what they've ended up with still offends the First Amendment. Gotcha, so the idea is probably the city's gonna, sounds like, try to rash it back a little bit, yep. make a presentation, and then hopefully try to get the judge to come along or figure out. Yeah. And in the meantime, there's a political side of this too because uh, the NAACP is not too happy about right. the placarding requirements. They believe that uh, those are eerily reminiscent of the signage that the Portland Development Commission required to be placed on uh, uh, buildings that uh, were in need of urban renewal uh, around Emanuel Hospital 20, 30 years ago, and they see what happened to their community then. They believe that this is the first step of what some of them are calling gentrification on steroids. Right, mass displacement. Mass, mass displacement, displacement yes. of people and of businesses and the like, because you know what, what uh, some of the city officials don't understand is that uh, owners are not gonna make these investments with no hope of return. Right. And they're either, gonna, they're either gonna knock down their buildings ultimately and sell them for development, or they're gonna spend more than the amount necessary for a basic retrofit. They're gonna trick out their buildings and they'll repurpose them. And if they repurpose them, the rents are gonna be so significant that the people who are used to living there will have no place to live. And what you know, the mayor initially didn't understand is this is his affordable housing. So where will all the people live? Yeah, well, that's what we say. I mean, urban brickers are what they used to be called, or that is your affordable housing in the core. Right. You've got new construction going on, which is going to be the higher class A, and this is your affordable. Well, we're hopeful that, that the judge is going to strike all of this down. Okay. And then it's time to start all over because, you know, nature abhors a vacuum, and there's going to be a vacuum for, the, for a while. The city won't know what to do. And at that point, I think it's time for you know, responsible owners to get together and try to pursue some strategies that will actually save lives in the case of an earthquake. Like, how about working with the gas utility to install shutoff shut valves yeah. at every uh, customer entrance? You know, you could work that cost into rates. Uh, there's lots of other things that we could do that make a lot more sense than... And then I know something's come up. I, we've got clients that own these, well, buildings that are on the list. And there's a question about it. Is it really should be on the list or how the list was obtained? There's, I've, you know, that's maybe- I'm glad you asked that question because we have another claim. It's a federal due process claim. 
And so we're this saying, is secondary to the, secondary okay. to the First Amendment claim. Okay. And we're saying you can't trust the list. The list was compiled in a very haphazard way. Uh, we took the deposition of uh, one of the engineers who was in charge of this program from the city of Portland. And he made it clear that uh, years ago, the Bureau of Development Services contracted with Portland State University and made a number of engineering and architectural students available who did uh, rapid visual screenings Drive of drive-bys of right. each of these, no invasive testing whatsoever. Um, the city no longer has any documents that would uh, sh uh, shed any light on who the individuals were, uh, what their training was like, whether they had any training at all, who supervised them, or the like. They even looked at the building, who knows? All, all we know is that there are notes with initials uh, and there are, uh, the, the individual students were the ones who drew the conclusions that a building was a URM or not. Not an engineer, no. Nope. No, and then it got placed on the database. And I asked a question of the chief engineer and I said, uh, now, if you had a building that could or might not be a URM and you weren't sure did you put it on the list or to keep it off the list? He says, no, we put it on the list. If we weren't sure, we put it on the list. So if in doubt, put it on. If in doubt, put it on the list. So you've got this list that was concocted, God knows how. Right. And um, then if you want to get off the list, there are no standards that talk about what type of evidence you have to bring to the fore. Basically, the position of the Bureau of Development Services is, well, you have to just convince us. Well, like how? How do we convince you? So the, the appellate process is so standardless that we think we also have a good uh, due process claim. So this may be on two tracks. Two tracks. On. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So More than you, one way to skin a cat. That's true. That's true. Well, we've dealt with the city before. This is not unusual that this is, we're in the, however you want to call it, we're in. So, so if you want to get more information, you can go to, I know one place is uh, Save Our Portland Buildings. Right. Uh, the website's down below would be a great place to kind of get updates. Uh, we, I know we send out regular updates in terms of hearings and things like that, but it sounds like May's going to be kind of the big, well, the city's going to come up with something tomorrow, right. which sounds like it's going to soft, try to soften what they proposed before, but then... And then April's going to be a big month. Okay. March yeah. and April will be, be a big month. Gotcha. Okay. So if we want more information, go to that, uh, save our Portland buildings, or feel free to contact. We'll have John's contact information there as well. Uh, thanks again for coming and sharing that. You're welcome. It's been we'll a pleasure. We'll see you again on next time on HFO TV. Thank thanks you. Thanks a lot. All right, it was great. Thank you. Our entire office specializes in multifamily real estate, making HFO the largest multifamily brokerage in the Pacific Northwest. Your success is our passion. Build your legacy with HFO. Call 503-241-5541 or visit our website at hforee.com for more information.